Hi, Archie. Hi. How are you today? Good. You look good. Did you have online school today? Nope. Tomorrow. Have you done any online school yet? Nope. So what are you doing during the day? Are you reading? Yes. Are you playing violin? Yes. Are you painting and doing art? Yes. Are you playing piano? Yes. What else are you doing? Are we are we on slide twenty five? Yes. Well, before we start reading about the star-studded gemstone, I want us to go back and look at slide 18 for a minute, okay? Okay. Yesterday when we looked at this letter, I told you that inside the blue circle, it is called the body of the letter. Yes. But there's actually a name for the pink circle and a name for the green circle. And I wanted to tell you those names today while I'm thinking about it, because if you ever need to write a letter in English, then there are these three parts. So the part in the pink circle where you say, dear so-and-so is called the greeting. And to greet, someone is to say hello, right? So when you shake their hand and you say, hi, nice to see you, you're greeting them. A greeting is when we are <clears throat> telling the person that we're talking to them. It's kind of saying, hi, I'm talking to you. I want to say something to you. And you say the name of the person that you are talking to or that you are writing to. That is called the greeting. And it starts out with dear, and then the name of the person you're writing to, and then a comma. And then when we're, the body is where we write everything we want to say. And then when we're done, we want to say goodbye and, and, goodbye. and give our name. And that, yes. that's this green part down here. And this is called the closing. It's when we, now think of closing like closing the door, okay? It's all finished. And when we do the closing, we add our signature. 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 That's kind of a hard word to say. Signature. Signature. And that's when most people will write their name in cursive. I don't know if there's a way to write. I don't know how people do their signature in Chinese, but if I'm gonna write my name in cursive, I would write it something like this. Oh. Okay. And okay. Um, so yours would be like this. Okay. And that would be our signature. Signature. Signature, yeah, you said that very well. So that's the closing. That's when we, that's when we bring the um, the letter to a close. We say, "I'm all finished now," and and you tell the person your name. So when we write a letter, there's there's two names. There's one at the top in the pink circle, that's the greeting, and there's one at the bottom in the green circle, and that is the signature of the person who is writing the letter. And then the message or what we want to say. It's called the body of the letter. 
and that's in the blue circle. And usually someone will also include the date. So if I add another color like orange, then up at the very top would be the date. So today is May 25th. So I would write here, May, first I write the month and then I write the day of the month and then a comma and then the year. Okay, so May 25th, 2021. And we call that part, I'll put an orange circle around it. That part is called the heading. And one way you can remember that is what goes on the top of your body, right? If this is my body, what's on the top? My head, okay? So this is the heading. I write the word head and then I add I-N-G. And the heading is at the head or the top of the letter and it gives the date that we are writing the letter. And then we have the greeting when we say who we're writing to. And then we have the body where we tell um, the person what we want to tell them. And then we have the closing. That's when we bring it to a close and we say, I'm all done now. And we sign our name. I said signature, but if you look at the first four letters of the word signature, that says sign. So sign your names when you have a pen or a pencil and you're writing it with your hand. So when we sign our name, we call it our signature. Okay, any questions about that? No. All right, so let's go back then to, pay, to slide 25. And we started the chapter called the star studded gemstone. Yes. And it started out with Geronimo Stilton saying, a shiver ran down my spine. Now that does not mean that a, some little thing with feet ran down my back. It's an expression. It is figurative language. That means that it means something different than what it seems like and what it sounds like. This just, we use this expression, a shiver ran down my spine, when we feel like, um, like surprised and maybe even a little nervous, maybe a little bit like, ooh, that seems so spooky or so like, ah, like a, like a mystery when we don't know an answer and, um, and it's very surprising to us. And we, um, we just feel a little bit like, oh, you know, like something's really strange going on here. I'm there. And they're trying to figure out what's going on. You know, is it possible? Remember we're talking about um, the, what they just saw on the video where they saw the security camera from the jewelry store where the diamond is safe and sound. And then all of a sudden the glass dome whoop, lifts up into the air. And then the diamond lifts up into the air and floats out of the room. And they can't see who did that. They just, they say, we have an invisible thief. And so they're wondering, hmm, was this a practical joke? Is someone playing a joke on us? Is this some sort of special effect that they're doing with a computer? And, uh, or is this a ghost? Wondered Geronimo Stilton. And, uh, and they, they, they said, you know what? All of our experts checked, checked it out. They, they, they said, you know, it's a mystery. They can't figure it out. And so they said, we need you hero mice. How are they supposed to stop an invisible thief? So we're going to start right here at the very bottom of the page. Now we don't know who's talking. We have to turn the page to find out who's talking. But someone says, we could watch all the jewelry stores in the city by using a video link. 
Oh, that's proton talking. Okay, it says proton suggested. When you suggest something, you give an idea. Okay, do you see this word right here in blue? You can highlight that in blue. When you suggest something, you're saying it, and it's an idea that you have. You're not ordering someone to do your idea, but you're saying, hey, I have an idea. What do you think of my idea? And so Proton is saying, let's watch all the jewelry stores in the city using a video link. And then Proton says, that way, when the thief strikes again, you know what that means, strikes again? Strikes again. Do you know what that means? It means when the thief goes into another jewelry store to do it again. But Commissioner Ratford interrupts Proton. How do I know that? Because I see right here, I looked ahead. Why did I look ahead? Because I saw some quotation marks. I know someone's going to say something. And I like to know who it is that's talking. So my eyes quickly zoomed ahead until I saw the person talking. And I saw that it was going to be Commissioner Ratford. And what does he say? He says, there isn't time. And then he keeps going because there's more quotation marks. And he says, Duchess Marilyn Mouscovia arrives today. Who asked Swift Paws? The commissioner explained that Duchess Mouscovia is a rich and famous rodent who is friends with Pete Power Paws, the mayor of Muskrat City. So what's the name of the mayor of Muskrat City? Do you know what a mayor is? I don't know. A mayor is the person who's in charge of the city. For example, um, like the, like the, mayor, the mayor of Taipei is this person, Ko, him, you know him? No, it's Chai ing -wen. No, that's the president of Taiwan. This person is the mayor of Taipei. Have you seen his picture before? Yes. Ko Wenja. How do you say his name? Ko Wenja. Yeah. He's the mayor of Taipei. Do you know who's the mayor of Taichung? No, a girl. It's a girl? Let's yes. find out. Oh, is it her? Yes. Is this her? Is this her right here? Xiao yes. Xiao Yan Lu. Yes. Or Lu Xiao Yan. Okay. How do you say her name? Lu Xiao Yan. Okay. She is the mayor of Taichung. Okay. So the mayor is the person who is in charge of the city. Well, I want you to look at this sentence. Um, that I just highlighted in pink and see if you can figure out who is the mayor of Muskrat City, okay? So the commissioner explained that Duchess Mouscovia is a rich and famous rodent. Mouscovia is the mayor. No, she's, a, she's rich and she's famous, okay? But she's friends with Pete Powerpaws, the mayor of Muskrat City. Oh, he's... The he the, the the Pete Power Pals. That's is right. The mayor. That's is correct. Mayor. That's right. He is the mayor of Muskrat City. But Duchess Mouscovia is famous, 
and she's rich. Okay, got a question? Yes. What is it? No. You raised your hand. No, I didn't. <laughs> okay. Now let's see what's gonna happen here. Let's go back to our highlighter. All right, let me see. I'll switch to, um, oh, now what color should I use? I'll use um, pink. Okay, there was going to be a fancy reception in her honor at Muskrat City's Grand Hotel. All right, now let me get rid of some of this. Um, should it, you know, some of this here, okay. There was going to be a fancy reception. We're gonna highlight that in blue. A reception is a special kind of party when you are introducing somebody or celebrating someone or honoring someone. So a reception is always or usually in someone's honor. When they say, here is so-and-so, we're so happy he or she is here and we are going to have a party um, in her or his honor, okay? To celebrate them, to welcome them, to let them feel special. I see what you're doing with your pen. <laughs> so this um, party is going to be for Duchess Mouscovia, okay? So when it says it's in respect, that the reception is in her honor. Do you see right here, this word her? That's talking about a girl. Well, which girl have they introduced us to in this paragraph? It is this person right here. Duchess Mouscovia. Okay, so I'm gonna connect these two. Yeah, there, like that. So Duchess Mouscovia is the person that's being celebrated at the party, at the reception. And the reception is going to be at a grand hotel. That sounds like a pretty nice hotel, okay? The, and then someone's talking and I'm gonna take a quick look to see if I can figure out who's talking, because I know I see quotation marks here and here, and then it tells us who's talking, okay? So the person talking is the commissioner, all right? So let's see what he says. He says, the Duchess will be wearing the star-studded gemstone tonight, okay? That's some jewelry right, some fancy jewelry. Duchess is a title for someone who comes from a family that is kind of a royal family, like the king or the queen or the princess or the prince or a duchess. And so they're somehow connected to royalty. Okay, so they're, they're important. And then um, he says, it's a really enormous, priceless diamond. Now, this is not really how we spell the word enormous. I'm gonna spell it here for you and you tell me what letter did they add to that word? What letter did the author add to that word? Enormous. 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 Yeah, do you see what letter they added? E. Yeah, why do you think they added an E? That's not supposed to be there, so why did the author do that? I don't know. Well, because what does this spell? What does that spell? Yeah, what is this M-O-U-S-E spell? What is that spell? 
you're using one right now on the computer. Mouse, mouse. And why do you think the author wants to say enormous and not enormous? We need purple for that, right? The author is always looking for a place where he can take a word and make it seem like it is about a mouse because his characters are mice. Now let's look at the word priceless. Now price, the price of something is how much it costs, okay? So the price of something is how much it costs. If we add some letters to the end of a word, if we add letters to the end of a word, those letters are called a suffix. And the suffix, the suffix here is L-E-S-S. -S. And L-E-S-S -S means without, or it doesn't have it. It doesn't have this, doesn't have what? Doesn't have a price. So priceless means there is no price. So do you think that means that the diamond is not worth any money at all? Or do you think it means that the diamond is worth so much money they can't even come up with a price for it? There's so much money and they can even come up with a price for it. Yeah, that's it. So this diamond, that's it. That this, this lady, this duchess is going to be wearing a diamond that is worth so much money, they can't even say how much. There's no price that they can say that would be enough. So then Electron says, what an irresistible lure for the invisible thief. Electron squeaked. Now this sentence that Electron just said has two difficult words in it. So we're gonna get our blue highlighter and we're gonna highlight irresistible and we're gonna highlight lure. So yeah, irresistible means I can't resist it. So there's this little word inside this big word and we're gonna break it apart and look at it. So resist is the word, okay? And then there are some letters in front. When we put letters in front of a word, that's called a prefix. And the, the prefix IR means not, okay? It turns the word into the opposite, okay? And, uh, then the, the letters at the end are the suffix. And this suffix is just turning it into an adjective, a describing word, a word we can use to describe what kind of lure it is. So this is what we're gonna, we're gonna talk about lure in a minute. But let's look at irresistible. Resist has to do with, um, your brain telling your hands or your mouth or your body what to do, okay? So let's say there's some candy or chocolate on the table or some fresh baked cookies and you really, really want to eat it. And your mom says, Archie, no chocolate or cookies or candy until after you eat your dinner. And dinner's not ready yet, so you have to be patient and you have to wait but your brain is looking at those cookies or that candy and is thinking, but I want it now, I want it now. It looks so yummy. I don't wanna wait until after dinner. The question is, can you wait? Can your brain have enough power to convince your hands and your mouth and your body to not eat those yummy looking cookies or candy right now? The question is, can you resist it? Okay, so resist means to say, I won't do it. I will wait. I won't do it right now. Irresistible means I can't wait. It's not possible. 
It's not possible for me to, to wait, to say no. I just have to have it right now. Those cookies look irresistible. Nope, I can't wait until after dinner. I need to eat them right now because they are irresistible. It's impossible for me to have the self-control to wait until later, okay? And a lure is something that we, it, it, it means kind of like bait. So have you ever seen someone go fishing? Yes. And when they're fishing, here I'll, I'll make my, um, here's, here's my little water where the person's fishing. And here's the person standing. And here's their fishing pole. And at the end of their fishing pole, they're gonna have fishing line go into the water. And then here's going to be my fish in the water. It's looking. Now, if the fish just sees some string hanging into the water, the fish might not be very interested. But let's say the fish sees a little wiggly worm. What color should my little wiggly worm be? Brown. So here comes my little wiggly worm. Oops, that's not a very good looking worm, is it? Okay, but if the fish sees that worm, the fish might think, oops, you know, I forgot the hook. Let me put the hook on first because the hook's the part that really catches, this is gonna be the hook, okay? And then we put the little wiggly worm on the hook. And then the fish sees the worm and says, oh, lunch, yummy, can't resist it. The worm is irresistible to the fish. And the fish comes over and goes, oh, bites the worm and the hook gets stuck in its mouth. And then the person feels the fishing pole getting tugged on and he pulls up the string and up comes the fish from the water. Well, the part of this is the, the worm is the lure or the bait, okay? So this worm right here is the lure or another word is bait. And it's the part that is irresistible. It's the part that makes the fish say, oh, I want it right now. And so, People can also have a lure or bait. And in the case of a thief, hi Archie, I'm back. I'm going to add a minute or two to the video to finish the thought that we were talking about. We were looking here at irresistible lure, okay? It's like those cookies right out of the oven that we just can't resist. We can't wait until dinner is over. We can't wait until tomorrow. We want to have them right now. Well, what would be an irresistible lure for a thief who likes to steal diamonds? It would be the biggest diamond in the world. And if at this hotel tonight, the Grand Hotel is going to be this famous person wearing a priceless diamond, it might be the biggest diamond in the world. I mean, the thief is probably going to go to the hotel and try to steal that diamond from, what's her name? Duchess Mouse Cobia. So that's what they're expecting. And then what does the author have the character say? when they're really surprised, remember something that has to do with cheese. Usually it's been three words. Many times there has been alliteration when the first sound of each word is the same. Like, um, what was that? Su uh, Swiss, Swiss, super Swiss slices or something. This one is blistering blue cheese which has nothing to do with the story. It's just sort of something funny that the author does and has one of the characters say when they're like, oh my goodness. And so this is what Swift Paws 
says. He says, blistering blue cheese. And here we can see what that diamond is going to look like that the um, Duchess is going to wear at the hotel. And remember the studded part are these little diamonds right here. So when something is studded, then you take the gems and you kind of have them in a row, in a line like this. And so this diamond has little diamonds on it that are studded. Okay, that's why the name of the chapter is the studded, studded gemstone something. The star studded gemstone. Okay, so we're gonna stop here for today and tomorrow we're gonna pick up when they say, let's shake a paw and get down to the Grand Hotel ASAP. They're going to set a trap for the thief, okay? And um, maybe one thing I will tell you before we stop today, and I will, be, I will tell you again tomorrow, but shake a paw. Now remember, paw is a animal word, right? An animal has a paw, not a person. So our paws are hands and feet or arms and legs. And what we would say in English when we are in a hurry is we would say, let's shake a leg, okay? So the expression in English would be shake a leg. And if you shake a leg, then you are in a hurry. Okay, so let's shake a leg and get moving in a hurry. We'll get down to the Grand Hotel and then ASAP, have you heard this before? ASAP <clears throat> stands for four words. One of the words begins with A and that's the word as. One begins with S and that's the word soon. One begins with A and that's as again. And one begins with P, which is as soon as possible. That means we'll go as fast as we can, okay? Because they want to set a trap for the thief. They know that a thief who likes diamonds will not be able to resist a priceless diamond, okay? A diamond that is so big and worth so much money, we can't even come up with a price for it. And uh, so this is an irresistible lure for the thief. He will be there. They are sure of it. They just need to be ready for him. They need to set a trap. Right here it says, set a trap. So when the thief arrives, he won't know what hit him. Okay, so, and, and here, who is he? Who is he? Who won't know? When the thief arrives, he won't know what hit him. We've got two pronouns here. He won't know what hit him. Who is that? That is the thief. So when the thief arrives, the thief won't know what hit him. And this is some figurative language. Won't know what hit him, okay? That, it's not talking about actually getting hit. It's talking about being surprised. Okay, so they know that the thief is going to be surprised by their trap. Okay, and it'll be, it'll happen quick. All right, so that's where we're stopping today. And tomorrow, we're gonna start right here. It looks like someone is stammering because you see that sh sh sure. And so we're going to make our star right here. That my star didn't work. Let me try that again. There it is. Okay, so tomorrow we're going to start with, are you sh -sh -sh sure? We need to go right now. Swift pause. I, what? Stammered. Okay, well, I just want to keep on going and going and going, but we're going to stop right there. So I'm going to say so long for today. See you tomorrow.